Welcome to our Line. Now let's take a look, a closer look, at the ability of carbon dioxide to absorb energy emitted from the surface of the Earth. And what we're going to do here is take a look at two hypothetical examples. We're going to start with the concentration of carbon dioxide of 285 parts per million, which is what it was before the Industrial Revolution started. And then later on we're going to show you what it looks like for the, more, the current more higher uh, concentration of carbon dioxide. Also, we want to see how much of the energy is absorbed by carbon dioxide when it reaches a, an elevation of one meter, and then we do it again at two meters. Now you say, well, one meter, two meters, that's not very high, but that reflects how much radiation carbon dioxide can actually absorb very quickly as it leaves the surface of the Earth. Now we're going to concentrate on what we call the bending mode the quantum bending mode of carbon dioxide because that's where carbon dioxide is most effective at absorbing most of the energy that it can absorb and that is then of course centered around the wave number of six, 667 per centimeters you see these numbers right here represent the wave number the number of waves per centimeter or in converted into wavelength around the 15 micrometer wavelength center now the shape is pretty peculiar right here. You can see it has a peak in the middle. We have the left what we call the P branch, the right we call the R branch. The peak represents changes in the bending quantum number and the P and the R branch represents changes on top of that of the rotational quantum number. The P branch represents rotational quantum number drops of one and the R branch represents rotational quantum number increases of one. And of course, we know that the delta energy between various jumps changes, and that's why we have this wider distribution, these two side lobes that have a wider distribution. So this curve represents the amount of energy absorbed from the, from the, from the surface. Notice that the central peak by one meter of elevation already absorbs 98% of what's available in that particular wavelength. The side lobes don't do quite as well initially, a peak of 38% for the P branch and a peak of 46% for the R branch. Of course, that drops off to near zero at the far ends. Notice that the range of frequencies that it can absorb changes from a wavelength of about 16 micrometers to a wavelength of about 14 micro micrometers. So carbon dioxide is very effective within that two micrometer uh, range. Notice that we have some harmonics that start over here to have some additional peaks for the, the rotational quantum jumps, which are not as common for the, second, uh, for the second change in the quantum jump. And then we have the side lobes associated with that as well for the, for the P branch and the R branch of the harmonics. But notice what happens now when we go from one meter in elevation to about two meters in elevation, the side lobes now go to an effectiveness of 62% its peak here and 71% of its peak here. So you can begin to realize here that it doesn't take a lot of altitude before carbon dioxide will have absorbed just about all the frequencies, all the wavelengths between 14 and 16 micrometers. Later on we're going to show you at various elevations how much of that radiation is absorbed. We're also going to take a look at the transmission graphs, meaning how much of it is actually transmitted to space, which means that eventually, since almost all of it will be, will be absorbed, that virtually none of it will be transmitted to space. And so we can see the effectiveness in carbon dioxide is quite remarkable in absorbing that particular frequency. So that's how it is.